I think the thing is don't judge the process as you go through it. You know, let the world, let let the universe, let your life unfold, let your own growth unfold in a way that surprises you. Allow it to be okay that you don't have all the answers today and you don't need them all right now. All you really need right now is two things. You need to know what is your next step and where do you want to go? You might need to know where you want to go before you know what your next step is, because that will help you. Yes, but it's kind of crucial. But you need to kind of know those two things. And maybe, you know what, if you really stop and think about it, you might actually know the next three steps. You might know the next five or the next ten. You might not know anything after that. You might know a few that are way in the distance, but you probably know something that you could do right now. This is Way of the Artist with Brandon Colby Cook and Evan Schulte. Identifying your blocks and demystifying your struggles so that you can claim your own path and make your life a work of art. Ooh, it feels so good to do the podcast. <laughs> I've always got, <laughs> I think I'm doing these intros more so just for your reaction now. I think so. It's like, ooh, I think I, I do oohs a few times. You like, I like to do the ooh because it does, it feels so good. Feels so good to go, ooh, yeah. Yeah, that's the way I like <laughs> to start my podcast. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to Way of the Artist. And we've got another, oh, just just absolutely tasty nutritious but like (laughs) like like tastes so good like conversation that we've got lined up for you right now oh yeah uh and so (laughs) without further ado i mean you clicked on the title so you have a bit of an idea of, of what we're talking about but we are talking about process the law of process which is uh one of kind of the quote unquote master laws of all of the laws um and we're gonna we're gonna dissect what that is all about over the course of this because man this one is so loaded this one has so much substance to it there are so many um other laws that are attached to this thing i mean pretty much the law of process it it contains with it every other law yeah in a lot of ways i mean if you were to if you were to open up a book, this would be the index or the introduction chapter to that book. It would be like, this is what you're about to get into. Process. Yeah. You know, so if this is your first way of the artist podcast episode that you've been listening to, you didn't land on a bad one. I'd still say it might be good to go listen. I like to, to think that nobody <laughs> listens to a bad no. one here, but but I, I mean, just to start with, to start with. Yeah. You know, um, it's a, it's a, it's it's an all encompassing thing. You know, we're not going to get into every little gory detail about the rest of the podcast, but this is something that I think people can continually refer back to. And, um, we actually broke down this whole idea of what process actually is. We're going to share that with you later in this episode. And that's really exciting because you're actually going to be able to see where you are in process at all times and help yourself, help yourself, shift from whatever situation you're in and adapt and change and evolve and and move through to wherever you want to go. So it's pretty cool. I think, I I, I mean, I think that's the promise really of the episode because that's what we're going to talk about. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff uh, happening in this one and I'm sure that's not even going to cover the whole thing because it's just, it's that massive. I think it's one of those conversations we could probably talk about it in infinite amount of times and and figure out something new with it but we're gonna we're gonna come at you with what we've got for for today (laughs) so i mean i think for me the very first thing that i wanted to like say off the bat with this is um the recognition that wherever you are right now wherever you are listening to this podcast as well as where we are recording this podcast, um, we are always in process. Process is something that is always, always, always happening, whether you are aware of it or not. So for me, the first step is always awareness. Mm. (laughs) So let's bring the awareness. So wherever you are right now, you are in 
process of something that's not, you know, and it's, again, it's one of those things that's like, there's, there's big ways and little ways. There's, you know, there's the process that you engage with when you've decided to write that book or make this painting or whatever it is. But then there's a way bigger process that's going on behind it. And another process that's going on in that there are processes within the process. Mm. Um, all the way to the grand scheme of well, the, the process of your life. Mm-hmm. of the life that you have to the process of you, um, you know, furthering your career as, as artists to the process of the very, th- you know, thing that you're working on that's right in front of you, you know, like there, and we could go in so many different directions with yeah. this. Um, but there is kind of, uh, a, some, I would say habits or patterns to the way that process kind of works. Well, and I, I want to give an analogy because I love those. Mm-hmm. Process is kind of like, it's like a river. It's this massive for, force of water or energy or whatever that's moving through and it's leading somewhere and it's going to go somewhere and it's going to get there. But it has to go through various obstacles and various things. As you go through life, you know, you, you will go down the path of least resistance in process. You will take whatever is the easiest way to go most of the time. And the, the way if you really want to achieve vision or you want to achieve goals or life purpose or things that are more meaningful or mindful, you actually have to start making it easier for you to flow into a path that is more in line with where you actually want to go. So the way that I could kind of put this is, uh, we can all personalize this, is that wherever you were born, wherever you came from, your parents, the schools you went to, the things you got involved in, the people you met, that was kind of the creek or the river bed that you were born into. But it doesn't mean that you have to live out that river. You don't have to go where that river always goes. So, you know, if that is everybody in your family dies of a heart attack at 50, you don't have to go down that road. You could change course at some point. And this is about where process comes into carving out your own path and seeing that you're more than just the flow of the water. You are actually the crater of the river Mm -hmm. and seeing that you can actually change where you're directing your energy and, and whatnot. But the thing is, is it's about being mindful or mindless of your process. Yeah. Well, it's like, it's about deciding where, where you want to go. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like, where's the, where's the end result? You know, like maybe you were, you were on the river that was, you know, leading towards, you know, a stream to another stream or something, or, and you're like, no, I want to go, I'm, I'm hitting the ocean. You know, like these are kind of the things that we can consciously choose, but only from the awareness of we are in a process Mm -hmm. of sorts. We're in, and we're going to get into this eventually, but the law of momentum, we're already in a process. We're in some form of momentum. Yes. We're moving somewhere. Yes. And, and this was something actually I wanted to touch on really early, which was, I mean, I, maybe you're, you're totally already on board with what we're saying, but maybe, you know, you have some reservations about this idea of like being in process that you are already in some kind of process right now. Um, but the thing is, there, there's no avoiding it. There is no avoiding process in our lives. It is constantly going on. Right now, wherever you are, you are in the process of listening to this podcast. For whatever reason you're listening to this podcast is part of another process. The reason you're listening to this podcast is because you're in the process of doing something in your life. You are in the process of, of, of seeking or of, of, of searching for something, perhaps, you know, that's kind of like what a lot of people are coming to us for. Um, or, and within that, you are in the process of maybe driving home, (laughs) you know, you're in the process of maybe, um, raising a family or in the process of, you know, um, picking up a a significant other to go for dinner. Like there's all of these processes going on and they are all processes. So 
The so sooner, your point, your the point so- kind of is also like acknowledge the fact that this is already occurring and probably most of it mindlessly by habit, by route, kind of the way life's going and that there's more than one process occurring at the same time. But all of these processes do relate to each other. Yeah. Because like how I'm in process with, say, uh, you know, relating with my friends and family might have an effect in how I'm in process of writing my book. They might not be directly related, but they have they have a relationship. Yes. You know, and these these processes we're in, sometimes it takes simply altering one process, which alters a lot of others, but sometimes you need to alter other processes to help you alter a process that's important to you. So Mm -hmm. like, uh, let me give a quick example. Yeah. Um, getting out of my old place, there were some other processes that needed to occur before that could happen. And then ultimately where I could go and take my business. So before I wanted to, I wanted to build my business a certain way in the process I was in, it was difficult. I had to work out a few other things. So once those things were worked out, then I could work more uh, intimately on the process of the new business model I wanted to apply. But until those things were taken care of, you know, uh, just basically paying off a few things, taking care of some responsibilities, making sure I'm generating a certain kind of income that comes in that can give me the time and space to be able to fully do that. Fine. I take care of that those were processes in themselves. And now I get to do the process I want. And I want to relate this just because like, say someone wants to be an actor or a writer, filmmaker, painter, musician, you might need to take care of a couple things before you can set yourself up to be able to fully dive into that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's all still part of the bigger process. You know, like that's like some, it's, um, you know, whether we're conscious of it or not, it's happening, but we make these things, we, we make our lives, I think a little bit more, um, well, or a lot more joyful when we engage with the whole thing, when we accept that we are in this. So, um, you know, let, let's, I, I want to kind of take this into some of the other touch on some of the other laws that are associated with this because process when we're, when we start to get real conscious with it, it, begins with, um, well, really any process begins with what we want, right? It really saying like, and we have wants all the time. Like I said, like if you're, if you're going out to dinner with your spouse, it's like, it's like, okay, I want to go out to dinner with it. So now there's this process that you said like, okay, you want to go out to dinner with your significant other, with your spouse. So now it's like, okay, where are we going to go? What do you like? And, and, that's the first part of it. Where are we going to go? How are we going to get there? Where are we going to go? How are we going to get there? Dress? Where am I picking up? Where, how am I going to dress? You know, it's like all, all totally. these things. It's a very, it's a very mundane kind of look at pro- like, but we don't really question how we do that. We just figure it out because mm-hmm. it's something so simple. And much of our life and the bigger things are actually that simple as well. We just don't think about it that way, which is another process that we can end up going through. Is well, seeing a, how it's like yeah. how the things that some of the bigger things that we want are actually they are that simple as well, but we might have to go through a process to actually make that make that something we truly believe that we can make our 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 dreams um, our dreams and achieving our dreams as sim- like the same thing as going out to dinner. <laughs> I love I love that you made that comparison. It's so great. Um, Something I learned about goals and achieving your goals is that most of the time we don't achieve our goals for one of two reasons. Number one, and you want to eliminate this reason as soon as possible. Your goal is dependent on someone else doing something for you. Mm. Goals need to be reliant on you. Your process is your process, not someone else's process. This is way of the artist. You know, this is your way. It's not someone else's way. It's not someone else's permission. This is you carving your own path in the world. And that is your goal. And you will make your way. The next thing that people have as their block is they have a missing resource. But the issue is that they will not acknowledge they have a missing resource. Mm. So for example, I want to go out to dinner with my date, my spouse, whoever, and I want to dress nicely but I don't have nice clothes to wear. 
My process is go and figure out how to get some nice clothes. Have it be go to the store and buy some, borrow some from a friend or figure it out. But yeah. that's my missing resource. If I don't acknowledge the fact that I'm missing that resource and it might be important for this other process I want to go on, then, you know, I end up showing up to this fancy restaurant wearing a sweater, a baggy sweater and ripped jeans, and it's not okay. It's not acceptable in that environment. So I fail at the next process because I didn't acknowledge that I could have resolved a initial process. Same goes for like someone who wants to be an actor or a guitarist or something. Mm -hmm. You don't have a guitar. (laughs) How are you going to be a guitarist? You got to figure that out. You got to figure out how you're going to get your hands on the instrument. How are you going to get your head shot so you can go to auditions as an actor or your resume or whatever. So the thing is, is that everything is solvable. Number one, never be reliant on anyone else to achieve what you want. Number two, be honest about what are the missing resources right now. And those are the initial processes that need to occur before you yes. can have the greater process that you're really after. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And some of those resources, some uh, oftentimes, you know, they, they are, um, yeah, something as simple as like, oh, I need to get new headshots or I need to, you know, record a, a demo and I don't have like a good thing to say, you know, there's those types of things, but oftentimes those resources are internal resources hmm. as well. You know, like for, Go on. <laughs> <laughs> so for my own self, you know, it was, I mean, uh, a number of years back after I had done some, some training as an actor, I was so inspired to take some of that training and, and bring it and teach it to other people. And so I was like, yes, I'm going to start my own school right? I, I, this is what I want to do. I have, and and it starts with vision. We did a big episode on last week's show, um, all about vision and vision is that same kind of thing. Like you can, you can tie that in with the dream, the big want. Um, and so once that kind of declaration is made, the process begins and there are, I didn't realize it at the time, but there was a process that I then ha- initiated myself into that I wasn't aware that I was initiating myself into. I thought, okay, well, you know, I just got to, you know, put some stuff together and get some people in the class. Yes, that's all definitely part of the process, but it actually put me into an internal journey, an internal process where I had to go through my shit mm. of being, well, who's going to listen to me? Mm-hmm. Who am I to, to teach this stuff? You know, is it even possible for me to do this? All, all this. So there's with all of these, uh, these new endeavors that we start on, because it's always, you know, process is always part of new beginnings as well. Mm -hmm. You know, is it's a, it's a vision, it's a new beginning. And, and then this is initiated and we are initiated into that Mm -hmm. and, there are challenges that can come up that way. There are almost maybe rites of passage on the way to towards that thing, towards that vision. But it was completely necessary because I could not teach classes like I could. I, I even did teach some and they, and they went pretty well. But in order for me to really, really get a handle on what I was doing and and what my reasons were, what my big why was for, for what I was doing. I had to go through some of on, on my own internal path of, of clearing out the, the obstacles, the doubts, the fears that I, that I had, um, in order that I could bring sort of that vision into, into its full, into its full possibility if that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I hear you. I mean, I think like, um, the, the part you brought up about having internal missing resources as opposed to the external ones, which is, I want to be a guitarist, but I don't have a guitar. Those external ones are usually the easiest to solve. It's the internal ones that I think are the ones that are not talked about as much. And, 
we don't necessarily always know how to confront them or look at them. But for example, say you want to be a public speaker, but you have a fear of standing up in front of an audience. Well, that is more internal. That's like, well, I have to work my fear. I have to get over my fear before I can do this. You know, you shared a second ago, I want to start a school, but my shit came up. Your shit comes up about, am I good enough? Who am I? Do I have the credibility? Will people trust me? Will they actually give me money to teach them to do this thing? Blah, blah, blah. And eventually you have to work that. And there may be a process in working an internal missing resource. I think the thing is, is that the nice thing about internal missing resources, though, although they're harder to identify and harder for us to be honest about and acknowledge, they're never dependent on anyone else. Like getting yeah. a guitar might be dependent on getting money and getting money might be dependent on getting a job and blah, blah, blah. But these internal resources, they're usually things that we can do all on our own. That's yeah. the great thing about them, you yeah. know? And so like if we can evolve them within ourselves, we can, you know, we can just get over it. Well, I'll, I'll share one thing. I mean, mm-hmm. when I was a kid, my dad said to me, um, you know, he said, don't ever be scared of public speaking. Just get up and do it. <laughs> don't bother. Don't. He's like, just don't even bother with it. And so I decided at a very young age, fine, I'm just going to get up and I'm going to speak. I don't care why I decided not to be scared of it actively. Be- yeah. But before I even knew I could be scared of it, he told me not to be. And so I just said, all right, I trust you. I'm not going to be scared of it. And, um, you know, I've never really, I've had moments where I've stood up in front of people and I've had the shakes. It's happened. Mm -hmm. I have actually had my body do an anxiety reaction, Yeah. but it's not like a mental fear. It's not like I'm, I'm not scared of what people think. I'm not so much about that, but I've had my body kind of go, Oh, Hey, this is uh, everyone's watching you. You know what I mean? And I had to look at that. Don't get me wrong, but a lot of the time when you have a fear or you have some internal limitation, I've actually found you can just decide, I just don't want to do that anymore. And you can actually kind of not do it. Yeah. It's actually quite incredible, you know, if you or, just try. Or sometimes I find you can shift it like this example in particular, um, and especially with something like fear, yeah. which is something, I mean, we all deal with. And as artists, we've got a, a man, we've got a closet, <laughs> yes, closet and a half full of, of fears. Um, is that very often those fears are actually excitement. Yes. And sometimes we just dwell on, on, and we interpret it as being like, oh my God, I'm so afraid. Like I'm, I'm freaked out. And instead I can oftentimes just shift it and say, it's like, no, like I catch that and being like, oh, I can't do this because I'm afraid and going just like, I can do this because I'm excited. Yes, <laughs> totally. Because the energy is very similar. Fear yes. and excitement are very similar energies. So it, it can be like, it can be a handy thing to just kind of say, it's like, well, maybe this is actually just excitement, you know, like this yeah. is, maybe this is just a, a quick, well, that's a little hack that you might be able to use. Totally. And what is fear and excitement, but a name or a label on a physical, physiological reaction your body's having? Yeah. All that's happening. The thing is, is that all that's happening when you have the shakes or you have something kind of vibrating in your body is your body is exuding a certain amount of energy, more energy than normal. And how you interpret that is up to you. So some people get the shakes, their hands sweat, whatever happens, and they go, oh, I'm scared. I'm scared, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they start telling a story around the physiological reaction. Yeah. Or some people tell themselves they're excited. I mean, and I, you know, I teach this in timeless storytelling. Tell a story that serves you. Mm -hmm. If you're going to tell, you're going to tell a story anyway, yeah. <laughs> you know, so that's you might the process. Have, that's the process. <laughs> you're going to tell a story. Like even when you're driving home from work, if you guys are listening to this, driving home from work, if someone is listening to us and they're in traffic, you're deciding how to tell the story of traffic today. You're deciding this is a pain in the ass. You're deciding I don't notice it. You're deciding, Hey, I don't really care. I want to take my time because I don't really want to see my wife yet. <laughs> Whatever it is. Do you see? I just made it up. Yeah. But the thing is, is that's, that's what, just a story. Yeah. It's just a story. Right. And the thing is, is like, um, all this stuff with process, there's always a story in, in intertwined into it. So my, my theory is this, when you're in process, which you always are, tell a story that serves your process. Don't tell a story that hinders your process. Yeah. Right. If your story makes you scared, then you need a new story Yeah. and that will help your process. And a story that serves what you want in life. Yes. You know, that serves the vision that serves, you know, like, because we do. And the temptation is so easy to tell ourselves a story, um, 
of how we are, um, how we are weak, of how we are um, not capable, how we are not enough, how we're not worth it. Uh, you know, like it's, it's, surpri- it's actually the first thing we usually go to for mm-hmm. most of us we, to tell ourselves that story. But we are choosing to tell ourselves that story. Yeah, we are telling the story of how we are weak or not good enough or whatever. Yeah. We made that up. And we yeah. can and an easy thing to do is just when we catch ourselves telling a story and, and it's easy to it's easy to tell because it feels like agitation, it feels like anxiety, it feels like anger. It you know, these are some of the our emotions are amazing. Uh, is an ama- are an amazing guidance system for us. Mm-hmm. And you feel that it's like, okay, whoa, hold on. I'm feeling this real nasty shit. What is the story I'm telling myself right now? And then to say, is this the story I would choose to tell myself? I love that question. Right? Is this the story I would choose to tell myself? And usually, I hope so, <laughs> it's like, no. <laughs> this is not the story I want to tell myself. This isn't the way that I want to feel in my life. So choose, choose a different story. Mm -hmm. That option is actually always available to us and it is always valid. It is always valid. You know, there's, um, you know, we were talking about this and every time we've been doing an episode, we've been kind of thinking about what questions can we ask the audience to help them kind of engage with this. And I think that's one of the questions that I would love people to walk away with or even ask themselves right now. You know, what is, what is the story I'm telling myself right now? But is this the story that I would choose to tell? Is this the story my ideal self would choose to tell? And to give you guys a, a way to kind of do this, I was sharing with Evan earlier today that, you know, I went through a lot of changes over the last few years of my life. And I mean, it's a very exciting place in my life right now, but I kind of feel like I'm so different I evolved and and went through so many processes that I, I literally situated myself and evolved and changed my very being and doing of life in such a profound way that it, it, it almost don't, I almost don't even recognize who I used to be. And I feel some days, like when I wake up, it's like I'm a video game player, like hear me out. It's like I'm a video game player playing a character and the character is Brandon Colby Cook, but the video game player sees the bigger picture of Brandon Colby Cook's life and says, well, this character that, that, that I am as a player playing through this perspective, you know, he's in this situation. He lives in this place. He makes this money as this, he has these skills. He has whatever. What can I do with him? How can I make his life awesome or destroy it or whatever? I can do anything (laughs) I want. And so Um, you know, as somebody who wants to make my life as amazing as it can be, I wake up and I kind of, my ideal self is the video game player. It's the person looking at the character of me and going, what can I do with me today? And we all have that power. We all have that ability to step outside of our subjective experience in this moment and to make a more objective opinion and a a more objective idealism about how we would like to play that character's life out, which Mm -hmm. is you. And so when you start telling your own story and you start choosing your story, you're being the player of the game as opposed to the character in the game. Yeah, that is. And to kind of bring this back onto the rails, this is kind of a way that you start to really engage with process as opposed to being kind of tossed around Mm. by process because it will if you're not conscious of it it will just kind of, you'll, you'll feel like you're just getting tossed around Mm -hmm. and it'll be hard. And it's very confusing. It's hard to make sense of anything, but when we have the knowledge that we are in this thing, we can more objectively step back and say, it's like, okay, what is happening right now? And this is where presence is a big part of, of process because presence is, is, is brilliant with process because it, it reminds us that everything is, is a step-by-step thing Mm -hmm. and whatever's in front of us is enough. Mm -hmm. Whatever's in front of us right now, there's something that we can do. There is some wisdom that we can take. There is some 
uh, a step forward that is available. And with that kind of knowledge, we start to move with the flow of process. Mm. Just be like, okay, this is exactly where I am and I'm going over here, but I can't skip over there. I can't just rush my way down the stream. I can't jump down the stream. I have to ride on the stream. I have to move with it. And I can't make this go. um, Yeah, I can't just hop out of it and, and land somewhere else. You know, and when we can move through it, we get kind of, we don't get banged around on the rocks as much. We can kind of steer and navigate, have a good time. It's like, you know, whitewater rafting, you know, <laughs> it's like, it's, it's kind of like that. It's I like love us, how you brought the analogy back. Yeah. In. Thank you're, you for that. You're jumping, <laughs> you know, you're, you're on a raft and you're heading, heading down this thing. And when you're not aware of yourself being in process, you know, it's just kind of like either closing your eyes or not looking at whatever's in front of you and suddenly you're smashing into rocks, your, your raft is, or your, or your boat is rolling over and you're getting soaking wet and you're just like, what the hell is going on here? This is shit. Mm. And it's like, Hey, you're on a river right now. (laughs) You are on a river and there's, I mean, and it's an extraordinary thing that's happening. You know, it's like, it's very dangerous if you're not doing it consciously, you know, like, yeah, you're going to get slammed around you can get hurt. But if you engage with it, you keep your, your eyes up and you see what's going on in front of you. It's like, it's like moving around the rock, you're rolling down next thing, you know, it becomes this exhilarating process and you're in this beautiful place in these canyons and trees. And you're like, Oh wow. Look at this thing that I'm, (laughs) look at this thing that I'm in. Yeah. Life, life. (laughs) You're living. And process is, is very much like that, where it's just like, okay, acknowledge that you are on the raft on the river. And now you can steer yourself. You can use that energy that is pushing you. You can use that, that flow that is moving you. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to toss you around everywhere. You can move with it and make it less painful and you can then actually make it quicker you're not skipping steps. You're not skipping ahead anywhere, but you are, you're still, you're making it a much more enjoyable and, and free ride. Mm. Yeah. I like, I like how you, you brought that about. Um, you know, I think presence is important because presence allows you to be grounded. It allows you to be in the reality you're in, in this present moment. Um, being present you acknowledge things that are good or bad, you know, helpful, not helpful, uh, how, what's actually happening right now in this moment, you know, how do you feel? What are you thinking? Where's your state at? Presence is an important part of the process. And you're always, I think we would both say, we'd always encourage you to always keep a certain amount of presence and an ability to tap back into your just being present ability as you go through process. But at the same time, when you're in presence, or when you're in process, I mean, you're present in process, you have a dream, you have a vision, you have something that you're, you know, you're, you're going towards some idealism. Yeah. And it's kind of like, I almost think of it like this. When you have presence, your eyes are open. And you can see the world around you and you, you know what you're navigating. And if an obstacle comes, you see it coming and you know how to dodge it and deal with it and whatever. Sometimes when we get into untreaded territory, our eyes are open, but it is dark. It's pitch black. And even though our eyes are open, we just can't see. And this is where idealism and vision come into play. This is where dreams come into play is when you and no one else can see the way, but you intuitively know because you have looked within yourself and you see so clearly what you want and where you're going to go that it's like navigating through your house in the night. You almost don't even need to turn on the lights because you know where the table is. You know where the chairs are. You can kind of feel your way through it. And it would be helpful to turn on the lights. But if you didn't turn on the lights, it's not like you're totally out of the realm of what you're walking through. You kind of have an idea. You know how fast Mm -hmm. to walk through a certain area and how slow to walk through another. Vision is like that. It's where you almost look into the future of your life, 
prepared for what you're walking into. And I, and the thing is, this is the wild thing. And I know that some people might not believe us and whatever, but this is where you actually create your own reality. You actually begin to form a world around you when you're in process, if you have strong vision and idealism and stuff, because what ends up happening is you create a set of standards, you create a way of being, a way of doing life that's different than if you were just to base your doing, being, and thinking based on where you are. So, for example, just to kind of further this point, if you live in poverty, you live in a really crappy place, and you know, you're or a dangerous place or something like that. Um, you may see your reality as though that is the reality. Mm -hmm. That is just a section, a slice, a minor little bit of reality. And if you base your entire future vision and dreams based on the reality you are in, your future dreams will be very limited. Dreams and vision are about saying, well, I know I'm here right now, but this is where I want to be. And this is where, this is what, what I want to be looks like. And so you don't necessarily know always the path that's going to happen between where you are and where you want to be. But like Evan pointed out earlier, you need to have visions and dreams that are, you know, because they actually create process. And I think process becomes mindful when you become more critical about your present state and you start to look at your present state and say, well, I like this, but I don't like that. And so no more of that and more of this. And in fact, I've never experienced this, but I would like to experience this. So I'm going to go out and make this happen. And then you start to find out when you experience it, do I want this? Do I need it? Do I even care? Maybe I don't. Okay. It doesn't matter. Move on. But I think it's like, um, and we were talking about this before, but I'm going to give a kind of a couple comparisons. The law of process is where vision meets presence. And you're trying to find that gap or it's where idealism meets groundedness or it's where yeah. the balance between dreams meet reality or, you know, vision meets the law yeah. of beginning where it's, you actually are, it's right? The, it's this, it's the connector. Yeah. It's the connector. Yeah. And it's, and it's this, all this stuff in all the laws we're going to talk about, about the way of the artist, they all happen in the middle. They all happen between vision and the beginning, right? You begin and there's a vision and all the stuff that happens in the middle. That's what we're going to talk about for the rest of this mm -hmm. podcast. We're going to talk about the middle because yeah. you pick your vision, you know where you are and you begin there. And now the rest of our job is to try and help you close that gap. Yeah. And you're always in the middle. You're always in the middle. That's always the th like, that's the thing. You're always in the middle. That was something that, that I remember learning in acting class. You know, it was just <laughs> like when you step out on stage, it's like you're coming from somewhere. You know, yes. like you're, you're not coming from, from nowhere. You're not just poof emerging out of nowhere. When you walk out on camera or out on stage, it's like there was something that just happened to you. You know, you're in the middle of your life, you know, and, and just as you are, you are in the middle of your life. So, you know, wherever you are right now and, and whatever your dream, whatever your passion is, you, you are already in the process of it just because you have a dream. Mm -hmm. And now it's really just about saying like, okay, so now how do we really engage with that dream? Yeah. How, how do we take charge of it? How do we author it and make it our own? Claim it. Claim it. As we like to say around here. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think like as far as practical things to, to bear in mind with this thing is, is again, is just like, well, process is like everything is step by step. Yeah. And the presence tells us that it's like there is always a step that is available to us. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that I've learned is that you might have this big dream and this big goal, but if you stare at it too long, it starts to become, it kind of transforms into a monster. Yes. You know, when you, when you look at it for too long, our minds make our dreams into monsters because we go, oh my God, I can't do this. You know, again, our shit comes up right? And that is when we are not staying present. Mm -hmm. That is when we are projecting ourselves out to some step that is just like, Whoa, why are you projecting yourself out to that step right now? Like you're not even close to that step right now. And then it's the presence tells us like, come back right now. What is the first thing? Mm -hmm. And you can 
and whatever the first thing, there's always, what's the first thing? What's the first thing? We talked about that in, in the, the law last, of beginning, in the law of beginning, which is there's uh, like, what is the next beginning best step? What is the next beginning? What yeah. is the next logical step? And the thing that's brilliant about really adhering to this practice, because it is a practice and it is a discipline to do this because we do, we want where we can, especially as millennials, if I, I assume there's probably a lot of millennials who are listening to this, we we're, we can be impatient. Um, and this does require a bit of patience, um, in order to do this. And, but if you trust it, which is another huge part of process is trusting the process and saying like, okay, this next step is going to bring me further. And that if, as long as you continue along that path of, okay, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? What's the next thing? It's always doable. Mm -hmm. The next thing is always doable. It's just, that's just how it works. It's like, it's, I don't know exactly why that works. It's just, that's just the universe. It's like the next thing that you need to do is, is always an option. Mm -hmm. There's always an option. If you're not, and you say, no, there isn't, then maybe you're not being quite creative enough, you or know, quite present enough. or quite present enough, or maybe you're being a little bit too idealistic or perfectionistic about how this is supposed to look. Again, that might mean that you're in a process of letting go of some shit. What might that shit be? Mm -hmm. You know, like what is causing you, uh, uh, pain and procrastination and, and causing you to stall on these things? Like, what is the, what is the thought? What is the belief that is going on in you? That's saying like, no, you can't do this. It's not possible. That's something to look at. Mm -hmm. That's something to work through mm -hmm. because I'm telling you that the next actual physical, you know, tangible step is always there. Mm -hmm. It is always there. And it's built upon the foundation of all the ones that came before it, you know, because that step wasn't, wasn't whatever place you're at now, that wasn't available, you know, five steps ago. Yeah. You couldn't have done it even at, at that level, you know, like it's, there's always, that's always the way the process works. That's always the way it works. I think, uh, you know, also, if you're treading down a territory that's already been done, that people have already done and proven that it can be done and it's already possible, you can figure out a lot of the steps just with some basic research. You can look into it. You can figure out, okay, well, I, they did this and I want to do that and this is where I'm at. So what are all the steps they took? And then you can literally map out all the steps that it will take to do what they do. I think when it, when you're walking blind with vision, it starts to come into the area where you start trying to do something that no one else has done before. When you start trying to do something, which is rare. I mean, it's rare that we're ever trying to do something that hasn't been done yet. I'm, I wouldn't say don't do it. I'd say definitely do it. If you stumble across something that no one's ever done before and you, it matters to you, but a lot of the stuff that we want has already been done. Mm -hmm. You know, buying a nice car. How many people have done that before? So many people, if that's your goal, that's a pretty easy one to figure out. You can start looking into what it actually takes and, and beyond just like, Oh, I need to make a lot of money so I can buy the car. Well, okay, well, fine. So then really what your goal is, I need to make enough money to buy the car. So how do you solve making that money? Then it's like, what way do you want to make that money? You see, like the thing is, is that people who say I'm stuck or I can't do something are simply not being honest about what the missing resource is, is like, well, first of all, it's either I don't know how to make money or I know how to make money, but I don't know what way I want to go about making money. Or I know what way I want to go about making money, but I don't, and I know how I want to make it. I just don't know how to actually go about that way. Okay. So you keep solving the problem. There's always something, right? So like, I, I would look at it this way whatever your goal is, whatever your vision is, whatever your dream is, maybe it's winning an Oscar. Maybe it's playing in front of a hundred thousand person audience as a musician. Maybe it's selling a painting for $10 million. I don't know, but there's a, there's a number of steps that are required no matter what. Cause it, I know this because if any of us wanted to do it, we just snap our fingers. We'd make it happen. It doesn't work that way. Things take time. So if you knew that there was 10,000 steps 
You take all 10,000. You don't necessarily know all the steps. You can know a lot of them. You know some of the major ones. How many steps per day would you take towards your vision? If you knew for a certainty that it was 10,000 steps. I mean, just do the odds. If you take one step per day, it'll take you 10,000 days. If you take five steps per day, so on, right? So you figure out how much you're willing to commit, how many steps you're willing to move forward. And here's the great thing about the step process, the, the process of being present. Sometimes a very small step is very meaningful in the journey. So like, um, you know, that step of like, I'm going to find the right photographer to take my headshot could be a very important step in the journey. It's very simple. Yeah. It's very easy. Well, for some people it's very easy. You know, I'm going to join an acting class. I need to, I need to meet some people, whatever your thing is. It's, it could be monumental to changing your thing. And, and here's the other thing. Let's just say it's day one, whatever your goal is, you just decided, I want to fly to the moon, whatever your thing is. If you're on day one, and you look at it and you go, okay, well, it takes 100,000 steps. It takes a million steps for me to achieve that goal. Well, at this place you're in, it takes a million steps. But something might happen along the way, which all of a sudden gives you an opportunity, which makes you realize that you didn't have to take 100 steps or 1,000 steps somewhere or 10,000 steps somewhere. Because from where you were at, you imagined it from where you were at. But you might have grown and changed and evolved. And so later on down the journey, when you've evolved and changed, you can actually do things quite easily that in the beginning were very difficult to do. Yes. So the other thing we have to factor into our goals is that if we are, in fact, growing and evolving through the process, the goal becomes easier. So even if it seems impossible today, you have to trust that by taking action now, eventually it might not seem impossible. So you may as well just go for it because one day it won't seem impossible. It's just right now because you're on day one or day three, it seems hard. But like when you're on day 100, you're going to be like, well, I'm actually pretty good at this. Actually, this isn't actually so difficult. And when you start and the other thing, too, is what's kind of beautiful and often overlooked about process and taking things step by step. It's like, so yeah, you've got the big dream. You've got the big vision of, of, you know, this thing that you, that you're picturing in your mind and and how great that moment is going to be. And it will be great, but the process allows us to celebrate along the way. You know, when we go, when we look at whatever the next thing is for us to do, we can look at all of these things as like, little steps, little wins, little victories that brought us even closer to it. And there's a reward to that. You know, that's why they say it's always great to like write these things out. What is like, what is your, what are, what is your task? What is the next thing to do? What is the next thing to do? And even to break that down into its smallest pieces, you know, like just break whatever the, the next big step is and, and how many little things are involved with that. Right. Like we were talking about, like, you know, if you're choosing to go, if you're deciding to go out for dinner, it's like, okay, well, where are you going to go for dinner? You know, like, that's like, where are you going to go? It's like, okay, we're going to go to this place. Part Check. Okay. What are we going to wear? I'm going to wear this. Check. Right. It's kind it's like that. So, so many of the, of these things are, are built up of all these little things, but those little checks are little victories. They're little wins. And it's important to celebrate those wins because they're bringing us closer. We are making our dreams into a reality. Mm -hmm. Like that is like those check marks are you making your dreams reality. And those things should be celebrated Mm -hmm. and process allows us to do it. Process allows us to have an amazing time on the way to it Mm -hmm. because you're going to be spending most of your time in that in-between phase in process in process most of the time is in process so enjoy the (laughs) shit out of it (laughs) moral of the story really is enjoy process i mean really at the end of the day that's the big thing here yeah well i want to take people through a process a process if you don't mind yeah so this is how we kind of sorted it out we had a talk preliminary talk about this this is how this is how I would say we see it is that you're in a situation right now currently 
you're driving. Yeah, or, or it's just your circumstances that you're currently in. Yeah, your circumstances. Yeah. And you've normalized them to some degree. Yeah. You show up this to your, is your life. Yeah. You show up to your job. You talk with these people. You have drinks with these people. You do this, whatever. This is your life as you normally do it. It has its routines, its habits, its whatever. Um, when you look at this life that you're in, ask yourself, am I living the life that I would live? Talk from your higher self, not the person Mm -hmm. who's in the situation, but let's just be honest and kind of go above, like from your ideal self and look down onto you for a moment as though you were like your own little God, your own little video game player. Look down and go, I'm playing this character right now. Would I live this life if this was my choice? Would I, would I, would I, you know, and if it's yes, fine, continue doing what you're doing. You must be doing something right and that's fine. But if there is an area or something, which there probably is some area where you go, well, you know, I'd like to do this. I'd like to, I'd like to ask out that girl or that guy, or I'd like to get involved in this, in this, um, thing of like music or art or whatever this thing is. Um, that's where you need to start looking at like your beliefs. Is it possible for you? Do you believe it is possible for you? Do you think you could do it? Would you be willing to? Do you think about wanting to do it? Do you believe in how cool that would be? Whatever. If it is, that's when you start to form vision. And vision immediately starts to take the situation you're in and where you want to go, and it shows a discrepancy. And now what ends up happening is you have a decision. This is your third step. So you went from situation to belief. Now your third step is, do I take action? Or do I continue living my life the way I'm living? If you continue living life your way you're living, you'll be in a constant, a constant process of, you know, hope and kind of wishing and never really acting on these greater ideals. But if you take action, you will actually begin to start live your ideals. So what ends up happening is if you take action, like Evan and I are talking about, you take a step, you take a process, you'll have a shift. Shifts will occur that will inform your beliefs further. You'll start being and doing your life more so in action, being, becoming more your beliefs, more your thoughts. And through that, you'll get results. Those results will further inform your thoughts and beliefs and vision that will change and adapt your situation, change and adapt you. And pretty soon you will be changed and adapt from where your normal situation or circumstances were. And you'll be pretty excited. And then eventually that will normalize again. And you'll be back into what is a new situation or circumstance yeah. because you will normalize it, but you will have changed and grown and evolved into yes. this new place. And then you'll go, I wonder what else is possible. Yes. <laughs> and then we go back to belief, and action, shift, being, doing, results, change and adapt. Yeah. And then situation until, again or circumstance. Until again. we get yeah. used to this process, to the process enough that we just start to form the belief that we can we can just create whatever we want. Mm-hmm. We can just create. And I mean, as artists, oh my God, like what else do we want? To, like what, what could be better? That And that's when it becomes a situation where it's like, it's not so much discontentment. Like we can get into the process from a place of joy. You know, it's not like, oh, okay, what's, what's, learning? what's stopping me? I'm not happy. Cause you know, that's might be a place where we begin at, mm-hmm. you know, like we're caught in a place in our, in our lives where we're like, what am I doing? You know, like that's sort of where we've started this as far as this, this cycle of, you know, you catch yourself in a place of being like, whoa, what am I doing? What am I doing in my life? Is this the life that I want? You know, kind of a, a great crisis of, you know, <laughs> of self can be a beautiful thing. And it sets us on this path of being like, okay, well, this is what I really want. You know, when we sit and we think about it, we have a vision, you know, and it's like, yeah, I would really love to do something like that. And then it's like, and then it's an internal thing. It's like, well, what's stopping me? What's really stopping me? And it's usually our own selves. It's usually our own sense of what is possible. And so we got to confront those things and we've got to change those mindsets. The internal missing resource. The internal missing resource. And then once we've cleared through that stuff, you know, and maybe we haven't even totally cleared it, but we've cleared enough of it that we're just like, well, I can take action on this now. I can, I can actually do something tangible and move forward on this. And that, and then that takes us through the whole process of, you know, we get feedback, we adjust, we shift, we, you know, and we start to become more than we were before. 
and we achieve what we set out to do. And then we go, okay, I wonder what else is possible. And now we, we, we kind of move through some of these things with a little bit more ease, with a little bit more grace. And we go, oh, okay, okay, okay. Like I can do this. I've been through this before. I know how to do it. And then it just becomes about what do I want to do? Mm -hmm. What do I want to create? That's when you have developed a certain amount of power and freedom because now you actually believe you can change your life, change your world, change your circumstances and evolve anything. And so then you just start to become the painter or artist of your life that you start to go, well, what would I paint? I could paint anything. What would I, what story would I write? I could write any story I want for myself. And that's when it gets really interesting because a lot of people don't believe they can do that. They just think that they're going to have to live out the story that's been written for them. But when you begin to realize that you are the painter, the artist, the, 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 the writer of your life, and you can make it whatever you want, and you believe you have the power to actually do it, that's an incredible moment. Because then you go, if I could write my life or play out my life or paint my life in any way I wanted to, what would I do with it? Knowing I could do it that's when you get to an interesting place. Yes. And I wish I could say that I was in that place. I'm not going to say that I am totally there, but I, it's one of those things that the more and more and more I live my life with this attitude and I am living my life more in this attitude, amazing things just keep on happening. Well, I did, you know, know, I want to stop because I don't think it's a thing you get to or you're there or you're not. I think it's a spectrum. You're closer and closer to it as you do more of it. Because like the thing is, the only reason why we can talk about it is because we've done it to some degree. I mean, I know personally, I've seen you do it and I've done it myself where we've literally gotten to the point where we go, let's do this. Let's, let's make this happen. And we've made it happen. Yeah. Now to the degree that we flex that power and ability to the degree that we believe we actually can, that's our own limit. That's our own internal limitations or missing resources, but we're moving towards it. And so, you know, there could be people in the podcast who have even gone further than we have. And some people are just beginning. It doesn't really matter. I think what we're trying to say is that when you're in process, you can be mindless of it or you can be mindful of it. And at a certain point, when you realize you have power of process, that's when you start to be able to flex your muscle of your control and authorship Mm -hmm. and design of your life. You know, I think that something that I'm just like, seeing right now is that being mindful of process of the process really the biggest thing is that it being mindful creates movement yes and movement is the most important thing you know it really it really is the most important thing in in process and that's why being conscious of it is so important because it is all just about movement keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. That's all process really is asking us to do. It's like, just keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, move along with it. And then we start to just figure things out by continuing to move. And then it all starts to like, suddenly the picture comes together in a way we never even imagined. Mm. And it can be something that, um, someone said at a retreat that I went before, they were talking about like what we're we we were doing this vision envisioning exercise and then it was just like, okay, now let it go and let it unfold Mm. because it's just like, because the unfolding is going to happen in a way that you probably don't expect. Mm. And it might unfold in a way that's even better than you expect. And this is also something that I've (laughs) found to be true as well. You know, so it's, um, Yeah process yeah. man like there's process, so many other laws yeah. that are coming in. i'm like oh god movement we're, like we're, we're just talking about the law it. of movement we're gonna get into and it. the unknown is so involved with this too it's just crazy it's just crazy it really is and you know i think the thing is don't judge the process as you go through it you know let the world let let the universe let your life unfold let your own growth unfold in a way that surprises you allow it to be okay that you don't have all the answers today And you don't need them all right now. All you really need right now is two things. You need to know what is your next step and where do you want to go? 
you might need to know where you want to go before you know what your next step is, because that will help you. Yes. But it's kind of you crucial. You need to kind of know those two things. And maybe, you know what, if you really stop and think about it, you might actually know the next three steps. You might know the next five or the next 10. You might not know anything after that. You might know a few that are way in the distance, but you probably know something that you could do right now. And so like to give people something to walk away with, I would say like, figure out where you want to go. And, and, and you know what, just decide, like my dad told me when I was younger, don't be scared of public speaking, just decide you're good enough to have what you want. Just decide. Okay. Let's just fucking save a bunch of shit here and just decide you want it. You can have it. I give you permission. Evan gives you permission. Yep. Give yourself permission to have what you want and be enough and allow that to be okay. From there, let's just decide some steps you can do right now, wherever you're at. What can I do right now? Well, well, I want to start an internet business. What do I do? Start learning about how to do an internet business. That's your first steps. Go on, read some blogs, learn about it. I want to be an actor. I don't know what to do. Go listen to an acting podcast. Go read a blog. Go do something. I mean, there's there's a whole bunch of yeah. da- data gathering you can figure yeah. out. Whatever it is, right? Yeah. You want to write a song, you know, write a couple of lines, you know, and put, if, put, yeah. or listen, listen to one of your favorite artists and really listen to the music for, you know, to get inspiration, you know, like there's something that can be done. Yes. You can do something. There's always something there. There's and never keep, nothing. And, and we're going to get into this later, which I'm really excited about when this podcast finally does come around, but the law of simplicity, just mm. keep it simple. Simple is this. Where do I want to go? Vision. What can I do right now? action. That's it. That's what the law of process is. The rest in the middle, we'll get into all about that to help you deal with your emotions and internal limitations and internal <laughs> setbacks, and missing resources and whatever's going on there. But I personally suggest, and this is my bold statement. I like to make bold statements because I think they're important. And there's something I learned when I was younger and they've helped me tremendously is just decide that you are enough forget it. Whatever you're scared of, just decide no more. Just make that decision. Watch it'll go away. If you, if you just decide, you can actually do it and just take action as though it weren't there. Like it's that, like that question, if you had a million dollars or you had, you know, all the money in the world, what would you do right now? Go and and do the first part of that action. And you're like, well, I need the money to do it. Do something that helps you move toward that action. Do something. Don't make yeah. excuses. Go live your life and go live it in direction of your vision. And even no matter where you are, I mean, that's that's kind of what you're tasked with today. That, As far as I'm concerned, that's the thing I want to kind of shove you out of the nest with because that's what we're doing here, <laughs> aren't we? We're saying like if you've already listened to the law of beginning and you've listened to the law of vision, which were two before that, this one is let's shove you out of the pro let's shove you out of the nest here and put you in process. Let's get you flying, you know. And if you got to land on the ground and fucking crawl for a little bit, that's what you got to do. But we're going to part get of your you, process. Get out of the nest. It's time <laughs> yeah. to go. You know, it's time to fly. It's time yeah. to be whoever you're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. It's your way. You're the artist. That's great. That's fantastic. Um, we're going to just quickly run through the beer that we've enjoyed over this podcast. Again, we're not being sponsored by these people. We just like to have beer while we have these conversations from uh, from local craft breweries and stuff. They're doing great stuff. So this one is from Old Yale Brewing Company, and this is called their Moon Dance Mango Wheat. I like um, it. The, ma- the mango is not super strong, but it's... It's nice. I it's, mean, it's yeah, it's, it's sweet. It doesn't have like a super mangoey taste or anything. I was expecting to get like a huge hit yeah, of like too. mango in there, but it's like, oh, okay, this is kind of mild and I mean, whatever. I, so I, I kind of like it. Like, if, I don't know if you didn't tell me there was mango in it, I honestly might not have noticed, to be honest. Yeah. But that being said, I still think it's really nice. It's it's a nice beer. It's not too sweet, and yeah. it it just it tastes kind of like a lager, but with like a little more flavor to it. Um, it's just nice. It's a nice beer. I'm, I'm good, enjoying it. Good for a, for a sunny day. Yes. Um, so I guess we're ra- we need to wrap this bad boy up here. Let's do it. Um, you know, I, I just kind of want to, I guess all I want to leave with, we've, we've covered a lot. I'm going to let whatever we spoke of speak for itself. Um, something you said just, just a moment ago, and you're talking about deciding and just deciding that you are enough. 
And when you make a declaration like that, there's going to be a part of you, a part of the, the, the small part of you that wants to drag you down. And that's not the real truthful you. The real truthful you is the one who's saying our life can, is full of possibility. We can do so many things. It's the thing that gives you the vision. It's the thing that gives you the passion, the purpose. That's the real you. The, the, the you that is saying you can't do this is not the real you. That's this little you that you kind of carry around on your back. And when you declare that you are good enough, it's going to have something to say about, about all of that. And I'm giving you the, the, the permission and the instruction right now is you stab that voice dead. <laughs> you, 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 <laughs> the moment you hear that, you kill it dead and you leave it in the ditch and you say, I don't listen to you anymore. You're full of shit. Mm. You just don't entertain that anymore. It's done. It has nothing of value to give you. So you have my permission <laughs> to just shut that voice up because it, it, there's no good to come of it. And I think that that's a huge part of us engaging with the process is really just getting past our own shit, our own limits on who we are and what we are. And just saying, you can do anything, really. It's said it so many times, but you, you really can with vision, with purpose, take the next step, kill that voice. Nothing can stop you mm-hmm. and embrace how everything is going to unfold. That's good. I, I kind of already gave my call to action to everybody. I'll just say it again. Keep it simple. Just look at where you want to go and what your next step is. If ever you're getting overwhelmed, if ever you're getting like in your head or emotional stuff's coming out, just go, whatever, I feel like crap today, but what can I do? What's one thing that can move me forward to my vision? And just do that and make sure it actually does move you forward to your vision. And it's not like some comfort thing or some distraction thing just do something that moves you closer you know um i think uh, i'll just relate it back to sports like when i was playing sports very intensely you know there was no game to play there was no practice to have no one wanted to go out in the rain and play the game with me um so what could i do go go out on my own shoot the ball in the net dribble the ball around some cones do something that makes me a better soccer player, that allows me to do the thing I want to do. Never, ever, ever make your vision or your action or your process dependent on another person. Ever. It doesn't matter if no one else wants to do it. You want to do it. That's enough. Just like Evan said, and don't let you not being enough stop you either. Because that's being dependent on some bullshit thing that's not you. <laughs> that's what I got to say. Well, we said it was going to be a juicy one. <laughs> I think it was. Yeah. Thanks for listening to the show. If you got something out of this, if you feel it improved your life or your journey in any way, please take a moment to subscribe, leave a review, or share the episode. You can also support us on Patreon, where we have tons of great bonuses. You are the ones that make the show possible and help us to thrive. Thank you for joining us.